Welcome to the Clydesdale Fitness and Friends. My name is Scott Schweitzer. I am your host and I am the Clydesdale. We love to do fitness and these are my friends. Hey guys. Hey. So we have to thank our sponsor, RX Smart Gear Jump Ropes. Uh, They're the best jump rope in the business. Uh, You can use Clydesdale 15, all caps, to get 15% off your order at rxsmartgear.com. They have all kinds of jump ropes. They have grips. They have accessory equipment for your jump roping. Um, So go check them out. In addition, we are sponsored now as well by Bear Bells Protein Bars. Uh, I just got to try the Crunchy Fudge today. My new favorite. Oh, really? Oh, my goodness. It is an Almond Joy. Oh, yeah. It it does have a little bit of a coconut. It is a coconut and almond. It is so... I'm all about the coconut, and it is now my new favorite. (laughs) They're all so good. So the Crunchy Fudge, top of the list now. And the salty peanut does taste like a Snickers. That's just not really my go-to candy bar. Yeah. Uh, but the but the almond joy, and don't get me wrong, the salty peanut was very very good. <laughs> but the but the uh, crunchy fudge, new favorite. Yeah, I'm digging the white chocolate almond lately. That's mm. good. That's pretty good. Mm. Yeah, that's good too. Um, so those are the three I've tried: is white chocolate almond, salty peanut, and crunchy fudge. Um, and so. With them, you can go to shop bearbells. Shot. Let me start that again. Shop. Bearbells.com. Use the code Clydesdale ten and get ten percent off your order of their protein bars. And they are really, really good. If you like candy bars, and you need to get a good mix of protein, fat, and carbs, uh, they have a nice blend of the three, uh, and very, very good tasting. So check them out. Clydesdale 10. So what's been going on this week? I feel like I, I feel like I haven't seen you guys in forever. It, it's just weird. Like these weeks are going on longer and longer and longer. Well, today sucked because uh, when we woke up, there was snow all over the place. That is correct. And, I and not just a little. It was like two to three inches here. Yeah. But here's what sucked about it. I mean, as far from my perspective, um, that none of it stuck to the ground. And why did that suck? It sucked because I could have taken one more snow day. (laughs) But no, now it was pretty. And as as fast as it came, it was gone. Like it's already all gone. But I work outside. And so so I was cold. So my, my neighbor across the street. So it was a very wet and heavy snow. And their tree came down. Oh, that's not yeah. fun. Yeah. It like split in half and half of it's like over. It was crazy. Yeah. Oh, did and, I tell and you? my oh go ahead, cat. No, this is unrelated. Go ahead. Uh, and my puppy, Mr. Walter, this mm-hmm. is his first time with snow. <laughs> so he didn't really know what to do. Do I lick it? Do I eat it? Do I play in it? He was all confused this morning when I took him out. Yeah. That's adorable. Mm-hmm. But adorable. I think he got the hang of it by about mid afternoon and then it was gone by this evening. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Well, we had a little drama in our neighborhood. Um, I think this was last week. We came home from a softball game or baseball game or something. It was like 6, 6 p.m. And stop me if I told you this already. Um, there was a park a car parked like right out in front of our house and then there was a guy in there it was like a black nissan murano with a new york license plate he was in the car so we're kind of like oh that's weird and uh, he was in there for about an hour hour and a half and i sent chris out i was like go talk to this guy like why is he in front of our house he was in front of our house but across the street right so and it was like right across from our driveway which is weird because like you know, Brayden has this big giant truck. And if he was trying to get into the driveway, out of the driveway, I don't think he'd be able to because the car was sort of right there. So Chris goes and talks to him. Guy says, uh, I'm here on a personal matter. Doesn't concern you. Um, I'm waiting for one of your neighbors. You know, it's very, very bizarre. So we kind of like, oh, that's weird. I, I got onto our, the what's FBI. that? It's the Seriously. FBI. 
Like, what is going on? So we, uh, I called the like not emergency number to just be like, hey, because I thought maybe it was like a private detective or yeah. I don't know what, but you figure law enforcement should know about it because it was, he was creeping us out. And like other neighbors were like, what's this guy doing? Because we live in a big circle. It's like a dead end. So no mm -hmm. one, everybody knows the cars that drive by. Like it was very obvious. It was not conspicuous or not. He was very conspicuous. Mm -hmm. Call the police. He leaves. No big deal. We're on like Facebook talking about it with the neighbors. How weird. He comes back the next morning. I get a text from one of my neighbors. The guy's back. And I'm like, apparently now I've become the spokesperson for the neighborhood. You know, instead of him doing something, he texts me. He's like, cat, guy's back. I'm like, okay, it's my, you know, I gotta do something. Call the police again. They finally had someone come out. Me and my ladies at 8 a.m. were walking around the neighborhood when the police came up on his car and we're asking him questions. The police officer leaves. I flag him down. I was like, hello, uh, I'm, I'm the one that called. Like, what's going on? The guy's car was registered to CBS News. He's a Dateline reporter working on a story. I thought of you, Amy, as soon as this is all happening. I was like, Amy, what about this? So police officer couldn't really give me many details, but apparently there is someone in my neighborhood that has six DUIs and is still driving. And he was hoping to catch this person driving. And I don't know, I guess, confront him or interview him or something, but there's got to be more to the story because Dayline does not just do like DUI stories. They do like murder stories. Yeah, you right. So now <laughs> trying to figure out who this person is based on where the car was and where they could see. And because we live in a circle, it really didn't matter. He could have been sort of anywhere. And the, the heightened awareness in our neighborhood now is like at an all time high. And I felt so like saying to the guy, as soon as I found out, I almost wanted to go up to him and be like, listen, I'm in my garage all day. I see everybody driving by. Like, I no, can let you know. No. <laughs> don't, don't say that part. I'll tell you why. Here's why. You don't know what's going on with, with Dateline stuff. So you have to start changing all of your patterns. You can't have the same patterns that you normally have because people that might be stalking you are going to learn your patterns. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Crazy. So we have, wow. we have four police officers in our neighborhood. And one of them, I talked to him and said, we were trying to help the guy. Like, maybe we could help him. You know, I wanted, I, I was invested at this point. Like I wanted to, <laughs> you know, I wanted a piece of the action. And he ended up leaving that day and never came back and we never saw him again, but like totally legit. So Dateline's been programmed on my DVR now and I need to figure out why they were in my neighborhood. Um, we'll talk afterwards and I have some sleuthing techniques we can try. Okay. I'm on it. Okay. don't go down that rabbit hole cat i'm telling you <laughs> this is an easy fix i need to know what county you live in <laughs> we'll find out who it is yeah. yeah i think i have my suspicions but yeah mm -hmm. super drama it was fun yes amy's probably on the next plane to delaware to help out hell yeah, yeah. yep we already booked it yep <laughs> anything else going on this week well um schmoopy had prom over the weekend that was fun so it wasn't he actually didn't go to the prom part but he participated in the other parts like the pictures beforehand the um dinner and then the hanging out after so it felt nice though that he got to do like some normalish kind of stuff to end yeah. to end the year so that was nice yeah. And we're taking up a GoFundMe account to get Amy a stand for her iPad. Yeah. <laughs> That's how my day is going today, though. It's like I'm in my bed right now because I'm like, I just. Yeah. You're in your bed. I, I am. Oh my Great God, guys. My these these uh, 440 a.m. wake up calls are killing me. Let me tell you. Um, we decided this week we're doing the Matt Fraser programming. It's okay. 60. It's it's essentially six days a week. Um, and we, and we didn't get an really, update last week. So I know it's, I mean, I'm feeling super strong. The met, it's a lot of strength. It's definitely like a strength cycle. So you're doing this things, the same things on the same days each week, you know, building the percentages and changing the rep scheme. Mm -hmm. um, the Metcons are super spicy, a lot of sandbag work, a lot of assault bike. We do 40, I do, I do 40 minute rows twice a week just as part of the workout. So I'm getting super comfortable on the rower. Mm -hmm. um, I bought a spin bike 
to accommodate some of our um, recovery, active recovery days mm -hmm. where we're biking for an hour because who wants to do that on an echo bike? Not me. Um, it's been really fun. So this week we decided to take today, today's Wednesday, we took Wednesday off to give us like two early mornings we can yeah. sleep in and then another two early mornings because Saturday we work out, but usually not at 5 a.m. We work out around 7 a.m. So yeah, um, it's been a lot of fun and I don't feel, it's a lot of volume and my whoop is telling me that like I'm, you know, overdoing it pretty much every day, but I don't feel terrible and I'm just eating more food and just fueling myself much better. Um, and I feel, I feel good. I don't feel sore. I don't feel broken. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of nice. So yeah. Love yeah, it. I have to I have to say the same thing like cuz I'm doing something different than I've done before and and so a good example is today was we do bench every Wednesday. And when when a Clydesdale hears, "Hey, we're benching." It's like, "Oh, here we go." <laughs> but this is a very different style of benching. It is So tempo? today was what's that? Tempo? tempo? Do you do like tempo? No, so it is it is 8 rounds of every 90 seconds on the odd 90 seconds, you do eight close grip benches. Mm -hmm. And then with then, as soon as you're done, you get off your bench and you pick up dumbbells and you do 12 bent over rows. Okay. So then on the even minutes, you do traditional grip bench press for 10. Then you slide your bench out of the way, get under the bar and do 12 inverted rows, pulling yourself to the bar. Mm -hmm. So at the end of that, you've done 72 bench press plus the rows and both kinds of rows in, what is that? Eight times 90 seconds in 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, you're constantly moving. Yeah. yeah. It's not, it's, and like I did 105 today. And when I started this, I was like, oh man, I went too light. I should have put some more on it. And by the last set, like I'm struggling to get the rep up. And you're and it's it's intended to do every set unbroken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, actually 105 was perfect because my last like three reps were pause, loosen the grip, <laughs> let it come back right. down. Okay, boom. Okay, there's one more. <laughs> That's funny. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, yeah, I'm benching, I'm benching once a week too, I think. Mm -hmm. well, I know I am. Should and then we, then we go into the Metcon and I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting every Metcon like whooped. And today was three rounds for time, 30 wall balls, 20 deadlifts, 10 burpees. Nice. 15 minute cap. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and yeah, that smoked me. Love it. But I, but I love the tempo of it all. It's just, cause that's what I need. I need like, I need to lose weight. I need to be fit. I need my cardio better. I'm not, strength will come back when I want it to. I need, I need this fitness piece. Right. You need like an hour of moving. Right. Mm -hmm. The full hour. Yeah. That makes, sense. that makes sense. And it's just awesome. Like I really love that I can go at lunch and be back at home at work. And when my day's done with work, I get to spend the evening with my family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's been huge. Yeah. Evenings with families. What is that like? <laughs> it's, it's, I'll tell you what it's like. It's sitting in the bleachers. It's not even for me. I'm just like, I get like five minutes in between each one of my clients and I literally like walk inside and I just like, hi, Hey, what's up? What are you doing? Okay. All right. Gotta go. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> It's so, brutal. so you're, are you up to coaching 22 hours a day? <laughs> I mean, I should be, um, I'm at, I'm at almost 40 hours a week, 40 hours of coaching a week. That's, I mean, I'd be curious if there are any other personal trainers out there that do like one-on-one -on -one sessions for their, yeah. for their job. Like, is that a lot? I think it feels like a lot. <laughs> Feels like it a feels lot. like it. it feels um, like Cause you know, I also have like a business to run and podcasts to, to work on and things. There's a, plus like people that I live with that I want to spend time with. So yeah, it's a little, I'm actually up to the point where I might not take I on any more clients. Oh, okay. Like, you know how, you know how nutrition clients do that thing. where are like, Oh, I'm not taking any more clients now. And then like I'm opening up for clients. And I mean, I'm sure a lot of times that's like a marketing thing, like to sound yeah. exclusive, you know, and like, I can only take so many. But uh, I can only take so many and 
I have like four people in the hopper right now that are asking to come and do, and I have a, I have an adaptive athlete who has a, a motor neuron disease. He's 54 and does not have very good use of his legs whatsoever. And uh, I'm, he's seriously considering coming, training with me. I'm so excited about that. Um, so obviously I would let him come in to the fold, but, uh, I'm getting to the point where I have to like shut my books down and just say no more clients right now. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. Never thought I would be here. Any, uh, gym news for you this week, Amy? Well, just that terrible workout I texted you about. Well, didn't you do like half Murph on Saturday? Oh, yeah. Okay. So here's the deal. So, so we start doing um like some murph prep work like we will post some like additional like excel stuff if people want to start prepping for murph just because we don't want people to come in and just do murph that are not prepared and, and planning to do it so we kind of we'll just do like it might be you know run a couple 400s and then do some air squats so we, we just kind of sprinkle things in for a couple um a good month prior to it and so i hadn't been able to fit any of it in and so on Saturday, I went into the gym. I was like, you know, I'm just going to put my weight vest on and just and maybe I'll do some running and then do maybe like five rounds of it. And then I just decided, uh, I'm just going to do half Murph. So I did half Murph with my vest, but I didn't I did not do it for time. So like I, I would would do a round and then like kind of just stand around for a little bit and then do another round. So I did do it smart in that sense. Like I wasn't trying to, you know, be completely taxed because it's, it's hard to get used to breathing with, you know, plate carrier on. And so mm -hmm. that's really what more of my training was for. Like, it's just to be used to having that, that on there. So did that. And then, yeah, this terrible workout that I messaged you guys about this week that had, it was like 40 kettlebell swings, 30 burpees, 20 box step-ups with your kettlebell. 10 wall walks, which it's good. I'm glad that they're, they were programmed one mile run and then back up. So 10 wall walks, 20 step ups, 30 burpees, burpees 40 kettlebell swings. I just, I just threw up in my mouth. It was yeah. not only that, like to coach it first and then be like, Oh gosh, now I have to do it. <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> it is the worst. That's the worst. The only good thing about that for me is that I'm, I'm, I'm using this Fraser program a little bit for like just a couple of my clients. I don't have, you know, my clients are not trying to do CrossFit competitively and all that. Um, but it's been fun to be able to do the workouts and then like suffer through them and then be like, Oh, this one's going to be fun for you. Yeah. <laughs> with this. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know this cat, but Amy and I've been fighting this week. We um, have been fighting. About? <laughs> <laughs> about the it's validity about standard it's not push-up standards is it no, no it's not no, no. Related okay it's it's about the validity of patrick swayze's acting career oh okay. shit okay well wait a minute okay whoa, whoa, whoa. i don't it didn't start necessarily and i think that charlie actually weighed in on this and i think charlie had a good question so roadhouse was on tv the other day mm -hmm. which it's on tv all the time yes okay. well i just happened to catch it. I, okay so I send a text to our group text and I was like, gosh, was, is Dalton not just a badass? Like, I just thought he was a badass in that movie. And, and so Charlie's point was, am I talking about Dalton, the character or Patrick Swayze as the actor? So I do think Dalton has, that is a good character, but I do love Patrick Swayze playing that character. Sure. Okay, so Schweitzer thinks Patrick Swayze is, eh, mm. eh, mm. Mm -hmm. and so then it got into talking about how do you not like Roadhouse? And he said, I said, guess what movie's on? Like one, a great movie. And he goes, Notting Hill. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm did. making fun of him saying, you're giving me a hard time for Patrick hey. Swayze. And you're talking about the best movie being Notting Hill. <laughs> So then we get into a fight further about how he says Patrick Swayze is a terrible, you know, was a terrible actor. And I was like, I, I can't even discuss this. Like, I, I don't even know who you are. I don't know how you can say that he wasn't amazing and dirty dancing. And then he tells me he hates dirty dancing. <gasps> 
Sacrilege. I, oh, wow. I couldn't Terrible look. movie. Ah, disagree. And then Point Break. <laughs> Point Break was an amazing movie, and he does awesome in that movie. So we have been fighting well, about what that. If, what if I told you I've never seen Point Break? Then, then you can't even have a dog in this fight. Because I don't like Patrick Swayze. Oh, my gosh. I don't Sorry. get you. Gonna we're going to come back to we're going to come back to this later in the show. You know what I want you to do though? Yeah. Uh, I think you should make a little TikTok poll on on those oh, things that you like to do and find out what people think about Patrick Swayze. All right. I'll do it. Okay. We we never came back to that poll by the way that you I called know. me a nerd for dancing and the poll says I was not a nerd. <laughs> and that I should keep doing it and that my moves were fire. Uh, did they actually say fire? I, I said, el- I think I asked if one. they were electric, electric. and right. they said yes. <laughs> so now, <laughs> now I text them things. That You've say, created a monster. <laughs> stuff about nerds. What did I text you the other, text you the other day? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it, was, it was like a meme and it was like, so-and-so practices the piano all day. And it was like, what can you say about this? It was like a kid writing something that was like, it tells me that Charlie's a big nerd. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I told that to Spicer about doing his TikToks. I love it. The TikToks are great. Keep them coming. Amy, so Amy they, disagrees. I, but, you know, that's just my style. So do we, do we want to talk anything CrossFit or just keep going personal? Uh, you know, maybe a little bit. What's, talk what's your this. talk about? These team quarterfinals real quick. Floor plans came out. Yep. They look just like the individual floor plans, except yep. <laughs> two things instead of one thing, which people are very disappointed in. Um, where's the creativity there? Um, yeah. Well, and, and you don't see like a worm. Right. You, you don't, don't see team see- stuff. It, it, looks, it looks like it's going to be, you know, individual performances sort of mashed together to make a team score, which like they could just use open, they could have just done individual quarterfinals for that. And some of these people did the individual quarterfinals and now they have to do the workouts again. So that should be awesome for them. So again, we don't know the rep schemes. We don't know. It's just the same floor plan. We don't know if there's synchro involved. We don't know any of that stuff. Um, But we will tomorrow. Is 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 out. (laughs) So we, um, we will know tomorrow, uh, 3 p.m. They're releasing the workouts. We are doing Clydesdale after dark. Um, but Thursdays are terrible for my two co-hosts that are here tonight. Yeah. So it's going to be a bro sesh tomorrow. Uh, but we will, we will go live and talk about the workouts. And Dex will be with us and maybe Cheryl. And we'll talk about those and get those out to you with some tips and tricks on how to to deal with the team workouts. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Dex, Dex has a lot of experience with that stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I'm, I'm anxious to hear his take about what you just mentioned, that yeah. they're not really team workouts and they're individual. And I, and I think he'll have some strong feelings about that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. hopefully I'm wrong. It just, it, it appears that way based on the floor plans and it would have been cool to just see some new things. I understand logistically why they're probably doing it this way, but come on. Yeah, but it, it's like lackluster though, because it's like, why not do it all at the same time? You know, timing wise, like it just yeah. feels weird. It's like, and then I'm, now I'm worried about the age group online qualifiers. Me like, too. Oh shit. <laughs> I mean, I will get grabbed though if I do 180 GHDs. Like I, I'll have to drop out. Well, you can and do that. You can do the Dex move and just cruise it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's crazy. And according to here's here's according to my daughter's dermatologist, I have a history of rhabdo myolysis because. <laughs> You're so, to the dermatologist? Yes, this is how this works. Okay. Eliana's on Accutane for her okay. skin. She's got she yeah. has pretty bad acne. It's getting it's getting great. It's working so well, but she has to get all this blood work done once a month. Yeah. You gotta be on like 8,000 forms of birth control. You gotta like pledge your life away. You gotta take a sex ed test every month to like prove that you know what you're doing. And like all this craziness. <laughs> take a sex ed test. Yes. Prove it. That's what she's doing is what you said. Yeah. Like, like there's things like there, the question, one of the questions was, and she had to ask me what the answer was. She's like, one of the questions was when you're using a latex condom, 
should your lubricant be water-based or latex-based? And she had to like answer that. She's like, mom, I'm like, she doesn't have sex. Like she doesn't know right, any of this right. stuff. But like, those are the kind of questions they ask you. And if you get it wrong, like they won't give you a prescription. It's insane. Oh, anyway. Okay, that's why. I with you. Because okay. apparently it causes birth defects and there's all these terrible things. Yeah. So they're making sure like you're not going to get pregnant. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, she gets blood work once a week, uh, once a month, two days before we go in and see the dermatologist. Last month, she gets the blood work. Now, mind you, last month, she just, my daughter didn't do anything in the fall and in the winter time, sports wise, athletic wise, working out wise, COVID special, nothing. She started softball, right? Practice every day, games, all yep. this stuff. She took a blood test. Her CK levels were high in her blood, okay. right? Okay. Uh, elevated. And it was like, she took the, I think she took the blood test maybe like on a Friday and she had like a game the night before and she had like three practices and doubles and all this stuff. And so my husband took her to the doctor the next day for like to get checked out. And they said, you know, our CK levels are high. That's an indication that, you know, you might have like protein breaking down in your in your bloodstream from your muscles from too much, whatever. And then Chris pipes in, he's like, oh yeah, my wife, you know, she said something about rhabdomyolysis and he's like, oh yeah, my wife had that a couple of years ago. And I was like, well, I wasn't there, but they all went yeah. along with it. So then I take her back the next time or she had to get her blood work redone like a week later the dermatologist calls me and she's like, yeah, so her CK levels came down. I'm like, no shit. Because I explained to her like what the happened. She's like, well, I was really worried because um, your husband told me that you have a history of rhabdomyolysis. And so she's at high risk for rhabdomyolysis. And I'm like, what is it fucking genetic? Like yeah. why? just because I got it, you're like, my daughter's more likely to get it. First of all, I didn't actually get it. Like it wasn't hospitalized. Yeah. It wasn't peeing Coke. Yeah. I, I just like had a really bad... <laughs> experience where like I couldn't bend my arms <laughs> and I got my blood work done like a month later and it was still really high but whatever like I didn't have but like Chris I'm like what are you doing <laughs> this is like a month ago we go back today same thing oh her CK levels are high she had a game on Saturday four games on Sunday and of course we got the blood work done yesterday morning and she's like, your CK levels are high. She's like, yeah. And she's like, oh yeah. And you know, you with the rhabdo and you know, she's at a higher risk. I'm like, can we stop with that? Like, it's not, I'm like little miss rhabdo at the dermatologist's office. Who, who am I? Crazy. Oh Lord. So anyway, yeah. So I can't do GHDs because I will get rhabdo apparently. It's hereditary. Yeah, it is hereditary for you. That was a long ways around for you to right. say you're not doing the AGOQ. <laughs> It was entertaining, right? It was entertaining. <laughs> I learned go. a lot about. You're welcome. <laughs> well, I can't wait till you guys do it. I am so stoked for you guys and hope you guys kill it. I'm going to but... see what it is before I decide. <laughs> <I>, same. <laughs> what is it? It's only like 20 bucks or something, right? I'll pay my $20. Uh, then... No, it's 50. Oh, is it 50? Oh, damn. Okay. I don't, I might, I might just show up at shred, Amy. You never know. Like I could just knock yeah. on your door like Thursday night and just be like, all right, we're, let's go. Let's go for sure. I think that would be awesome. Be I, cool. I would love to like get my camera out, film it. And then we could put something together for it. Maybe if we don't do it, we could just break it up and like make it a team workout. <laughs> Seriously. Right. I love team workouts. We could just, I do too. I love to go through them all and just do it together. Half, half Especially if there's. 120 wall balls and 120 calories. <laughs> right. 60 be all right. Yeah, exactly. I'd be okay with that. Amy, we'll you kill wall balls. I, I hear you say that, but I. I've I seen you. Don't. <laughs> I don't love them either. They're my least favorite thing. Uh, I just did it tonight too. So I'm. So um, I, did you guys see that CrossFit is beta testing their on-ramp program now yeah. more mm -hmm. nationwide um, The where you can start CrossFit at home yeah, and I go love through the coaching of Chuck Carswell and James Hobart and mm -hmm. all of those amazing people. And then your last class is signing up at an affiliate. Very cool. I, I love it. I think it's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, I'm super stoked that they're beta testing now. Cause it was just like what two states or I think like two cities, even, you know, like yeah. locales where they probably were, you know, had to be closely aligned with the gyms that they were going to sort of funnel people into. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. now they're, they're calling out for people, for people from anywhere to just do it. So yeah, it sounds like it's going pretty well. It's we actually had a great conversation with a guest that we're going to have on in probably two weeks about it. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and so that was that was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm excited for you guys to hear what they have to say. Um, any other topics you guys have on your mind? So um, did you follow any of the Rogue stuff, um, the Rogue Challenge stuff? Oh, is it over? Yeah. Well, deadline was Monday. Yeah. At, you know who won? No. I this was the, what was this, the bench press in the row? Yeah. The pump and row. The pump and row, yeah. Do we know if um, Taylor Williamson did it? <laughs> no, no. Three for four? I, 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 I could picture her doing very well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have a chance to look at that, at that. It's been a very busy week, I think, for all of us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it really has. And so, um, yeah, I never got a chance to look at that. They did announce that a couple more um, semifinals are going to be, or yeah, semifinals are going to be online, right? Lowlands, Asia, and Brazil. Yeah, I took a picture of the the graphic. If, but you're right, the the whole one week, like the third week, is yeah. all virtual. And they moved Brazil to a week later for whatever reason, and then so it's really Granite Games, Mac, West Coast, and West Coast. Are they only S South Africa. And South Africa. And, and Australia. Tori and Australia. Still, yeah. yeah, Torian's happening. Are the only ones that are scheduled to be live at this point in time. And we still don't know where Granite Games is. And they still haven't asked for volunteers. And it's less than two months away. So I, yep. I, I, it's scary. And the same thing with West Coast. I mean, I know we've heard rumors that maybe that one's going to move locations. But nothing, nothing solid on that either. Yeah, we... We interviewed someone on Monday who did kind of confirm that they are moving West Coast and it is going to be in Las Vegas. But we'll see. And that's from an athlete that's participating. Mm -hmm. But that athlete doesn't know that they're going to that one either because we still don't know who's right. going Correct. where. Right. right. But, but to that, they did announce today that the leaderboard is valid. Okay. So the leaderboard that's out there oh. today is, exactly. Got it. Okay. is valid for the semifinals. Mm -hmm. But again, that person Nobody we talked to said they were not given any instructions as to how the placing was going to be, um, who's got to go where. Yeah, and these, and these athletes don't know. I mean, the ones in North America, they don't know whether they're going to be in an in-person or, or if they're going to be virtual. And you know, there's a four week spread between events. I mean, that could be a huge difference in how you train and what, you know, we're, we're eight weeks away, less than eight weeks away. Yeah. It's, right? it starts the end of next month. So six weeks away, six, seven weeks away from this first one. And people don't even know if they're going to that first one or not. Now kind of crazy. I heard, I heard that like, so we're recording this Wednesday night. I heard that Thursday they were going to send out the first set of in invitations. Okay. And, so maybe and like then, the invites, but see, Oh, if they do that, that was going to be so mad. And then they have till Monday to, to accept. decide to accept. Mm -hmm. And then they'll sit, then it's going to be that backfilling process. Are you sure they're backfilling? They are. Really? Because they they said they weren't going to. They weren't for the quarters. But okay. for the semis, they're going to fill. Really? Because some of those athletes that competed and, and finished in the, I think Andrea Nissler was ninth in the quarters and she's going to go team. Yeah, I mean, I know it's not, it doesn't sound fair, but I didn't realize that that was happening. So when you say they're sending out the first round of invites, they're just sending it to the top 120 to say, you're in, do you want to go? They, they're not going to say where you're going yet because they still don't know. Because once they backfill, they're going to have to reseed yeah. everybody, right? And, and figure all out of where that would go. be, I would be speculating. Yeah. Ugh. What a mess. Because I have, there's a couple people I know here that are like 126. Mm -hmm. So he might go. I didn't think they there's, would there's a good chance good. they will. Yeah, that's cool. And that's... if people can't travel for, for some reason, then they would go into that hopper at the end. Yes, but that won't, that won't backfill people though. That will just be 
Like you have to, you, you accept whether you can get where somewhere or not. I would think you're not, do you know what I mean? You have to be in, you get an invitation yeah. to, I, I don't to know. compete, you but it's not your, on it, yeah. but you just don't know where you're going to go yet. You might go at the, the catch all, or you might go to one of the four in your. Yeah. It's, it's really a your, mess. That stinks. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully they can smooth that out for next time. Cause I do like the concept. Yeah. Really like the concept, but it needs to be a little more transparent and it's probably just because they don't, they don't even know what they're doing. Yeah. I think it's guess. probably because they can't make certain decisions yet because right. of COVID and yeah. Yeah. So a little personal thing, um, not personal, but you know, I used to be a huge wrestling fan when I was a kid. Did you see that Seth Rollins one time WWE champion qualified for the quarters still still an active wrestler did the quarterfinals and wrestlemania in the same week <laughs> same weekend cool. wow same weekend yeah so he did all the events in 2 days and then competed at wrestlemania crazy that's very cool i think it's a it's a cool like little publicity thing for the sport Sure. To say here, and he's a very popular wrestler. Yeah. Um, so th that's huge for, the, I think a huge thing for the sport yeah. that he did it, that. It's part of the reason why I think having these quarterfinals was a brilliant move, right? They're making so much more revenue from, from it by getting the extra 50 bucks from people. People are willing to pay it because they're part of, you know, this next step, which is super cool. Um, and you're right. It's get, it's giving them exposure to people at that next level that you wouldn't necessarily, you know, if this guy's just doing the open and not making it to regionals, you probably wouldn't have even heard about it. But the fact that it's the quarterfinals, I think, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Same thing with age line qualifiers. Like there's so many more people that qualified. Yeah. Because it's not the top 200. Yeah. It's the top 10%. I mean, I would have never made it otherwise. Yeah. But you two get to say, I made it like to the yeah, second round. I mean, they're going to get my 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Right. I just like, I think that's a huge feather in your cap and like, you should be proud of that. Yeah. I feel like it has an asterisk next to it though, just because it's a different. It's a, I don't. But it's going to be the same I going do. forward. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But yeah, I just, I guess just because last year or two years ago, you know, it's such a, is right here and it, it's so different, but yeah, you're right. It's, it's going to be that way going forward. Did you guys see our, our boy, Justin, launching a new programming? Yes. I Underdog do. Athletics. I did. Uh, it's very I, cool. lo I love the name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm mad that I just paid for Fraser's thing because I think I want to pay for his thing too. <laughs> I want to <laughs> check it out. I want yeah. to just sample yeah. everyone's programming. Yeah. It, it kind of, like, I would love to see what it's like. Um but I'm on a good path now and I just want to kind of yeah. stick to what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but I would love to see it. And, and because he's just so cool. Like I just, I just love that man. Me too. Um, his, his ladies are getting so strong. Like I know that was one of his goals is to get, get those girls numbers up and to get, you know, people's heads right and things like that. And he just seems like everything that he set out to do, he's doing very well. Yeah. And can we talk about uh, Tola Marquino's crazy, what was, I don't remember the number of the workout, but the quarterfinal it's, workout it was, was the, the, the last the, one, test five. Test five. Holy crap. What, sub three? It was like two. Yeah. I mean, I, I would have done, yeah. It, 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 uh, he, I couldn't have seen anyone moving faster than that. It was insane. Touch and go every snatch. And his burpees over the box were just like Jeez. beep, 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 beep. When he really, he yeah. had to send it because he was, yeah. he was kind of on the, on the borderline right of the making bubble. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So impressive. So, yeah. So yeah. Impressive. When, when he, when he snatched, I can't, it was like in Dubai Oh. and he power snatched what 270. Yeah. Super strong. Something, yeah, and an engine oh. clearly, at least for you know, a very for two minutes, duration. yeah, <laughs> it's like me, yeah, yeah, he's he's real impressive. And we, we have talked 
we have talked about AG OQ a little bit. You know, you guys are getting your invites on the 26th. Yes, I did oh. see that. Yes. So exactly. it'll be official. Monday. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're down to about our last 15 minutes already. I know. Let's go. Let's do so it. So we're going to do our silly questions brought to you by Up Before You Coffee. Yay. Yay. You can get your Up, up Before You coffee at upbeforeyou.com. Don't try to say that too fast. <laughs> And you can use the code Clydesdale 20 to get 20% off your up before you coffee. So first silly question, what was the best Patrick Swayze movie ever? Dirty dancing. (laughs) Really? So why, why is that better than the others? Uh, because of his moves and shaking his hips okay i am about dancing i love to dance i just love the whole movie and nobody puts baby in the corner but how, how many negative points do you get for his overacting that is just if we're going to talk about overacting you can talk about jim carrey like we're not talking about jim carrey i'm not I, defending jim why, carrey what make, why is he an overactor you need to be subtle like Hugh Grant. <laughs> Hugh Grant, here we go. <laughs> you have a man crush on Hugh Grant. Uh, kind of. Yeah. That's funny. Well, I feel like, Scott, you probably don't even have a favorite. Do you? I actually do. Okay. What is I know my, what is. my favorite is Youngblood. Okay. Uh, minor league hockey movie from early 80s before before Patrick got too full of himself and started overacting. Um, it, it's a great gritty. Um, Rob Lowe is truly the star, but uh, Patrick Swayze kind of plays his best friend on the team and, and all of that. And it is, I, I still watch it today if it's on, it's really good. The love story between Cynthia Gibb and Rob Lowe is so good. Well, speaking of Rob Lowe, uh, Soda Pop Curtis, my favorite Patrick Swayze movie is The Outsiders, where he played Daryl Curtis, or Derry, as they used to call him, the big brother of Soda Pop and Pony Boy. So I don't love it because it's it's not really a Patrick Swayze movie, but it's a movie he was in, and I love Counts. that movie. Counts. Yeah. So you could tolerate it? Yeah, right. Very early in his career, he played the big brother. It was, I remember watching that movie thinking it was so cool that like three brothers lived on their own together and just like made things work. And, you know, Derry was just, he just got things done, you know, and held those kids accountable. It was, it was cool. And, and one honorable mention is Red Dawn. I do have to get yeah, that gonna movie. Yeah, I was going to say Red Dawn was on my list. Point Break is pretty awesome too. Never seen it. Oh my God, Spicer, <laughs> you really would like Point Break. <laughs> That's funny. Well, maybe someday I'll watch it. I do like Kiana. Keanu. Kiana. Keanu. 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 I don't know what you're talking about. Keanu. You like Keanu. All right. So oh, hold on. <laughs> talk, about, talk about overacting and or like typecast. That dude plays the same freaking character in every movie. Except I mean, good grief. That kid Johnny cannot Utah, act. When he played for Ohio State football team. That kid cannot. And that one of the worst. And he played for the Ohio State football team as uh, uh, in the replacements. Yes, two two movies. Yeah. Yeah, he must really be an Ohio State fan, so I'll give him a little bit of props for that. (laughs) I I do want to point out though that I don't know if Kat saw this, and I want to make sure she does Uh that Disney Plus is doing a new series called National Treasure. to continue the national treasure story on shut up yeah it's coming out soon is nicholas cage in it i don't think i think it's younger like younger people kind of taking it over now talk about overacting i I know i'm not not a fan (laughs) nicholas cage wow yep although moonstruck was a great movie uh, it could happen to you. Great love story. Yeah, no, Moonstruck is better. 
Loretta, are you in love with him? Yeah, mom, I love him a lot. She slaps him and she says, snap out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I would just also like to point out to the podcast that I was the one talking about loving Roadhouse, which is a... And Schweitzer's like, Notting Hill. <laughs> <laughs> I said Red Dawn and Young Blood, a hockey movie. No, but when I said, "Oh, well, guess what? Awesome, you know, badass movies on," and you said, "Hotting Hill," <laughs> make a TikTok about that. You got lots of TikTok. Speaking of TikToks, um, you and Charlie, what's happening? We, we have a plan. Uh, uh, well, that's great. When's that? When's that being executed? Uh, when it stops snowing. Oh, uh, okay. it's already stopped because it. Cause, cause it started yesterday and finished today. Yeah. No, we just, I just, it, listen, it's been a very busy week. You know, doggone yes. well, it's been busy. Yes. You guys um, lost and you like guys a took ago, nine months saying. to do yours, <laughs> no, we did not. but we, we, the script is done. We okay. are ready. All right. Sounds good. I want an update next week. So the sex, speaking of snow, the, Next question is, what was your favorite snow activity? And it can be at any point in your life from one to 95. Kat, you start this one. Okay. So this is when I was a kid. Anytime it snowed, um, we would get a bowl and we'd fill a bowl with snow in the, right off the back step before, you know, dog went to the bathroom or did any of that. And we would put maple syrup on it and eat it. And it would be like a ice cream slushy. Ice cream. Yeah, we make like an ice cream sundae with the snow. Hands down, best thing to do in the snow. Aside from like building a fire and watching TV and eating pizza, because I'm not really an outside snow person. Mm. But, yeah. Yep. Amy? Okay, well, I had a plan, but then I just changed it when I was thinking about this. So when I was a kid, um, we would go outside and build random not snow people we would build random different things and one of my favorite ones is we built a huge with my dad's help kangaroo so we had a huge kangaroo and a pouch and it was you know felt like it was super tall um so that was just a fun thing because so we would we always talk about it. like remember we made the kangaroo so, that's cool yeah well i grew up in the foothills of the Appalachians. And so yeah. we got dumped on with snow like every year. And it's where chains are legal to be on tires and the whole bit. And um, so when my dad would shovel the driveway, it would create these huge mounds like to get into the yard. And I would take my football out and I thought I was Walter Payton. And if, if you follow football, like Walter Payton was known for being able to leap up over the defensive line into the end zone. So I would run with everything I have and jump and try to dive up over top the snow mounds into, into the, the soft snow in the yard. And I would do that all winter long <laughs> over and over and over again for hours. And then I'd like try to throw the ball up and try to jump and catch it as I'm going over you know, <laughs> all different kinds of stuff. But oh, that was, that was legit my favorite thing to do as a kid, probably in all season long. Yeah. So next week we have a returning guest. I'm so sad I missed this one. She actually said on the interview that she was sad Aww. that you weren't there. But she understood why. Yeah, whatever. Baseball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so a returning guest, Annika Greer. Uh, at the age of 17, has qualified for the semifinals. Um, and like 23rd, I think, in North America. Yeah, she just missed top 20. I remember yeah. talking to her that weekend and she said she really wanted to get top 20, but hey. Yeah, I actually talked to her right after event five. Apparently, I didn't know it was right after. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and yeah. I, that was and, and I asked her like how it went and she said, I just shit the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, her name appears ahead of Carrie Pierce on the leaderboard, which it I does. thought is kind Lauren, of an awesome Lauren Fisher. thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's a lot of names that she's well, I mean, Carrie Pierce, third fittest in the world, oh, right? Yeah. Like that's, that's pretty awesome. 
Uh, but what's interesting is, you know, when we talked to her last, she said that she was going to focus on building an engine because she was really strong. Well, she hasn't lifted a lot. And she actually found out through the open and the quarterfinals that like she forgot to ha- how to hang clean. Yeah. <laughs> and she forgot how to snatch. And so uh, she said, we're going to be working on that over the next couple of weeks just to get that back. Um, yeah. But if you don't remember from last time, like her clean and jerk at 16, and now she's 17, was 250 pounds. Yeah, she's a beast. Yeah. And she lives in Canada, right? She does. Yes. On Very PEI, cool. Prince Edward Island. Yeah. Yep. Um, and small little gym, small little community. Just, yeah, it's, it's crazy. And she talks about all of that on this episode. It was really good. And she's so mature for 17. She really is. And she's Very really nice. fun to listen to. She's a really good storyteller. Mm-hmm. So make sure you check that out. And then we're going to finish up with our best thing from the internet. You guys are going to go first. I'll so. go. Sam and Nicole are fostering two baby pit bull puppies and they are adorable. And Groot is not too sure about them. So I'm talking about Nicole Holcomb, Sam Briggs. They have a dog named Groot. They are in possession of these two little babies that have their little rogue collars on um, and they are preparing them for adoption. Super, super cute. Adorable. So I have two because uh, I couldn't decide, but I'm going to be quick about them. It's the okay. first one is um, Brooks Leish on, was on Talking Elite Fitness. It was one of the best episodes they have ever put out. Um, he actually talks about why it's important that CrossFit athletes unionize. And he did it because he, used, he was a professional hockey player and why it was important um, for them to unionize and why and how it helped them over time. And he is willing to step in and help. He was one of the union reps when he was in the NHL. And it was just fascinating because it was from a perspective that I never thought about. And, um, and it was the hour, or I think it's even over an hour. It was one of their longest episodes ever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was totally worth it. Uh, it went by really fast. And the second one is I got to give a shout out to my boy, Peter from coffee pods and wads. If you did not see in the last 24 hours, he released an episode with Dave Castro. Oh, cool. And it is the best Dave Castro interview I have ever seen. Good for him. That's awesome. Uh, because Peter's so relaxed, mm-hmm. Dave was so relaxed as well and open and honest about a lot of things and, and joked around with Peter. It was, it was really cool to see. Um, yes. Highly recommend, highly, highly recommend. Great. Now I got two things I got to listen to. <laughs> okay. Mine is from Wait, Make Wads Great Again, and it includes Carrie Pierce. Did you see it? Mm-hmm. It's pretty funny, but it talks about your crush walks into the gym. Me, just act natural. And then it says awesome, oh. and it's Carrie Pierce doing the worm across the floor. I didn't realize that was her doing that. Yeah. I saw that one, but I didn't know it was her. How funny. Yeah, it just makes me laugh. Yeah, that I was love actually pretty good. Part. Yeah. <laughs> Well, a special shout out to our sponsors, RX Mark Gear. Um, they're, they're so awesome. We're still trying hashtag to road to a thousand. We have picked up some more subscribers this week, uh, which has been pretty cool. And we're getting closer and closer to that next century mark. And when we do, we will be giving away a brand new classic RX Mark Gear jump rope. All you have to do is subscribe to our channel, Clydesdale Fitness and Friends Podcast. And, and now it's a an official podcast because Kat has sneezed, coughed, oh, whatever it was. Yeah, that was a cough. <clears throat> and all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, have a public profile, and we will draw from all of the public profiles when we hit the next century mark and give away a brand new RX Markier Classic Jump Rope. You get to pick the colors, weight, handles, everything. Also, okay. don't forget when you go to rxmarkier.com, Use that code Clydesdale15, all caps, and get 15% off your order. Kat just got her new gym set of jump ropes, and she used the code, got her 15% off, and it looks really badass in her gym. And my kiddos are loving it. They're asking to jump rope. They're like, hey, before we leave, can we jump rope? 
Yeah. It's very cool. I love it. And then also bear bells, protein bars. Oh, so good. (laughs) So good. Um, Make sure you use Clydesdale 10 to get 10% off your purchase at shop.bearbells.com. And make sure you check out that crunchy fudge. It tastes (laughs) just like an almond joy. (laughs) That's what it's called. I just, yep. (laughs) And the salty peanut tastes just like a Snickers if you're into that. Yeah. Um, and the white They're almond, the white almond, white chocolate almond is really good, but it doesn't taste like another candy bar that I am aware of. No, it's just delicious. They're also yeah. good. And so with that, make sure you like and subscribe. If you're listening to us on audio, leave a five-star review and maybe write a little review for us. That all helps our algorithm leave comments. We love when people leave comments. Uh, we, we, we always write back. We always respond. So make sure you do that. And with that, we'll see you next time on the Clydesdale Fitness and Friends. Bye. See ya.